Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode and I got some stuff to show you, as usual. Um, not a ton of stuff, making me a little nervous because I've only got, I got this amount of stuff here and I got nothing for next week yet and that's going to just come by real quick so I might have to get creative for next week's video. We'll see what happens. Uh, however, uh, this video should be pretty cool. It is full of ultra reds. So, uh, of course, that makes me happy. I don't know about you guys, but it makes me uh, ecstatic. Uh, first of all, I got a gift from my buddy Dicastrum, and he picked me up one of these Tomica Limited Vintage Lamborghini, Lamborghini Miras, uh, man, in yellow. So this is just beautiful. This is so fantastic. I couldn't believe he just, you know, picked me up one of these. These are not cheap. Um, and... Uh, very, very awesome. Of course, we're going to open up this box. We're going to take a peek at this. And I am super stoked to get the yellow one. I've already got the red one, um, which I actually listed as one of my top 10 new castings of 2021. Oh, gosh, we're in 2022. Uh, 2021. And it was on my Lamley article. So again, if you haven't checked that out, go to the Lamley blog. Lots of the end of the year content for the Lamley blog is just the most exciting stuff to me. Uh, really, really fantastic. Kind of look back at the year, look at all the cool castings that come out. Inevitably, everybody misses something and all that jazz. But if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. I still got another article I'm going to be working on for that, which is going to be my square bodies of 2021 article, which is going to go through all the 2021 Auto World square bodies that's going to be a chore. Um, I've got them kind of sorted out and aside. I think I'm still missing one that I got to include, but yeah, it's going to be an undertaking. I don't know how long it's going to take me to get it done. Hopefully before February. All right. Anywho and how this is pretty awesome. All right. So we're going to take a look at that. Of course, for Christmas, my buddy Todd gave me an amazing little present and it almost looks like two ultra reds here. We've got, it's not, but we've got the Hot Wheels cars, of China or the lost cars of China Hotbird limited to 10,000 pieces. There are two variations of this. There, I believe there's two variations. Uh, Dumas, you will let me know in the comments. I am sure. Uh, there is a red line wheel variation and then just a straight up black wall variation. We're going to open this sucker up and take a look at it. This is a very desirable uh, version of this car, this hot bird. Uh, these are kind of difficult to find being only limited to 10,000 pieces. And um, anyway, they're, they're kind of difficult to find and I'm glad I finally got one in my collection. Now I have to hunt down that other variation, but the paint on here looks gorgeous. Uh, so we are definitely going to, uh, to go ahead and do this. And there's some interesting things on the back here. So we'll read the card. God, the card is just mint. It's too bad we're going to just rip it open, but it is what it is. All right. And then uh, he also gave me this that he's had in his collection, I think, for a long time. I think our buddy Andrew actually found this at a Walmart close to me. And then Todd picked it up from him because Todd really likes this uh, uh, 1971 uh, Ford Mustang Mach 1 casting. However, this is the only ultra red of this car I was missing uh, was this particular one. And this is from uh, Premium Series Release 4 for 2017. Uh, the regular cars are limited to 2,500 pieces, which makes the ultra red fairly limited. Um, this one just doesn't come up very often. It's an easy one to detect, I think, on eBay because it's got a green interior. We'll look at... Uh, the other two models. I'm still missing the CUDA from this release. Uh, so if anybody's got a lead on that, I need that one. And then my, then finally that 2017 premium release four will be complete. But I was stoked that he gave this to me for Christmas. And he's such a nice guy. So thank you, Todd, crazy Todd. Yeah, I mentioned him all the time here. He's been very generous to me and uh, very, very cool dude. It's too bad he doesn't make videos on his collection because honestly his collection puts mine to shame. Um, it's ludicrous, in fact. So he's got so much really cool stuff. All right. So anyway, there's that. And then I got from SC Diecast. Uh, again, kind of local bodies. We got two Ultra Reds here. I purchased these from them. Uh, so we got, these are both from the latest 2021 release three. Well, I guess it's not really the latest series, but I think it's the latest one that's even shown up at a Walmart around the U.S. Um, and even at hobby dealers yet. 
has been release three. They're a little bit behind. There is a release four and a release five coming out yet for 20 that are technically in 2021. It's been a weird year or it was a weird year. 2022 is probably going to be pretty weird too. Uh, but yeah, things are a little behind. Uh, so we got the uh, Ford F-150 and the Dodge Challenger. Uh, got those two. I got the two regular from... Uh, uh, the version A's, and then I've got the version B's already off card. So, of course, we'll take a look at like the three together as we open these up, and uh, that will be that'll be fun as well. And then Andrew Jeremko, Jeremko, uh, cool dude on Instagram. Check him out. Uh, he always tells me if he orders sealed cases of Auto Row, and if he ever gets an Ultra Red. He just sends it to me. He just sends it to me and only wants in return really is the regular version of the vehicle to replace the Ultra Red because he doesn't really collect the Ultra Reds. And I'm like, okay, well, that's crazy. But yeah, still, that's awesome. And he always sends around a couple extras and stuff like that too. I've got a small box going for him yet. Um, there's a couple things I need to find for him yet, but um, I will hook you up hopefully soon, Andrew. Um, and then, uh, so he sent me a box that had the Ultra Red of the Suburban from that release, same release, 2021 release three. So now the only red I am missing from this release is the square body. Not the easiest one to get, uh, but I got the Supra. That's probably gonna be the hardest one, right? That was the hardest one and I pulled it out of a case. If you haven't seen that unboxing video, that was fun. Um, so I've got the Supra, I've got the Jeep, and now I got the Challenger, the F-150, the Suburban, the only thing that's left is the square body Chevy. So I gotta get that one yet, and then this release will be complete. So that's pretty awesome too. Uh, so that was a quick quick completion of this release. That's always great when I can knock them out real quick. The ultra red color on this just looks kind of interesting too. It's almost like they painted it over the gold. I don't know how to explain it, but in the package it looks a little odd. Maybe it won't once we get it out of the packaging. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we'll get a close look at it once we rip her open. And of course, I've got the uh, the regular here for the version A, and I've already got the version B off card, so we'll we'll look at that. And then, um, so lots of ultra reds, four ultra reds, fantastic week. And then he also sent two along two Siku uh, vehicles, a Porsche 911 Turbo S Cabriolet and a Porsche 911 Turbo S. Uh, both in blue, one in kind of a metal flake blue and the other in the kind of a lighter blue. And, uh, of course, we will also get to peek at these. So, yeah. But Ultra Red City today. And uh, so that's it. I mean, that's all I've got to show you. Um, so, I mean, he also sent along um, an extra one of these Jeeps. He said he sent it to me. I haven't even pulled it out yet. He said it sent to me because there was something weird going on with it. And he wanted to know, he thought it wasn't salvageable or something like that. And he wanted to know if I could maybe make a custom out of it or, you know, down the road if I started doing it or make a weathered one or something like that. So we'll take a peek and see what's exactly wrong with this thing. Um, I don't remember exactly what he said, but it's loose. And uh, we'll see if we can detect uh, what's going on with that. All right, that's it. Let's go ahead and we're get, we got a bunch of stuff to crack open. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this week. So keep her tuned. Okay, so before we go full on Auto World fanboy here, we're going to go ahead and get the other branded stuff. Not out of the way, but you know, we're going to look at that stuff first. So Lamborghini Miura SV. I picked uh, Lamborghini Miura, obviously, is one of my favorite castings in 2020, uh, mainly because of its significance in being the first Tomica Limited Vintage Lambo. And we know that that's going to open up the door, that they're going to be coming out with lots of Lambos now. Um, and they already have a, a few slated for 2021, including the Countach in two different uh, varieties. And you guys know, if you've been following me uh, for a while, you know I would be very stoked about that. And I am. I, it's like a dream come true, to be honest. So, yeah, we're going to look at the mirror. Uh, I love the mirror. The mirror is a great uh, Lamborghini. It's a cool car and all that good stuff. It's a beautiful automobile. But uh, the Countach is, you know, the bee's knees for me because, you know, when I was a kid, definitely was the poster car. 
the Countach, the Testarossa, the 959, you know, that era is kind of my thing. So, yeah, got that. Comes with this little card with, uh, you know, some writing on it that obviously I can't read. Um, and then the only, of course, irritation with this is that it does come with the side mirrors that are separate little pieces. That if you're brave enough, you can go ahead, and talented enough, you can go ahead and glue those onto the side of the car. Not going to happen with me. They are going to stay in that little package down there, as I do with any of the add-on pieces from Tomica Limited Vintage. That's my only gripe, honestly, about the brand, is that. Uh, aside from the fact, too, that they are expensive, that, that cannot be denied, but, you know, you sort of get what you pay for here, and these are very, very detailed models. So pull her out of the package it's not going back in the package it's going to go into a carny case so i can put this packaging back together and do that get that done there and let's go ahead and zoom in on the model and take a quick look at that so yeah it doesn't disappoint the yellow one is I think if you're if you got to pick one of the two to buy, uh, this is the one to get the yellow one for sure. Um, the wheels look fantastic on this. They did a great job with it. Um, no suspension on this model. They usually don't. They have suspension on a lot of their models, but usually if it has got like an opening part, or if it's a truck, it's not going to have uh, suspension, and this one does not. Um, but, like I said, it does have an opening part. You almost can't even tell. I mean, you can, but they do a really good job with the panel lines and stuff like that that you almost can't even tell that there are pieces that open on this. And, of course, one is going to be our engine compartment here. Looks very nice. I mean, look at the detail on that motor right there. Um, we can zoom in a little bit here. But, uh, yeah, take a peek at that. looks really cool. And then, of course, also the front of it opens. You got a spare tire in there. And just really, really cool. So very, very detailed model. It's got inserted details for headlights, of course, that we're used to with Tomica. Uh, and inserted detail for taillights. I kind of wanted to look at the back. Maybe we could see how that's constructed. I don't think it's kind of covered up. They did such a clean job on this. But yeah, those are those are inserts right there. Um, your SV. Exhaust details, of course. Uh, the interior is just a black. It's got a lot of molded detail in there. But dang, that's nice. So just a beautiful car. And... Uh, a really cool version i am just stoked i am really stoked that they started doing lambos and uh when the countaches come out that's just going to be i mean that's going to be awesome so very very cool really really neat all right so there's our lamborghini mura beautiful car Almost considered one of the most beautiful cars ever created is the Mira, right? Um, so let's stick with kind of a foreign brands kind of thing for a minute. We're going to do the Siku. Again, thanks, Andrew, for sending these along. Uh, number 1523, Porsche 911 Turbo S Cabriolet Convertible. Uh, Siku. Uh, Siku, they're, they're a little bit larger than one... Actually, quite a bit larger, I would say, than 164 scale. They're almost in like the 155th or something like that. I don't know if it says a scale on here. We'll find out once we get it open. A lot they come in this this kind of generic looking packaging. Um, they're kind of made. They're really made to be more toys than they are collectibles. I would say. And made in Poland. That's kind of a neat thing. Uh, I don't know if it really says a scale down here. These are stats about the actual car. Kostfash. Interesting. But, I mean, they're, they're detailed. They got rubber tires. 
Uh, they do have the inserted details for the headlights. I think they're not really expensive retail-wise over there. Um, and you get a lot of detail. They're built very durable. Um, and, you know, as a toy would be. And again, they're they're quite a bit bigger than 164 scale, but they're cool. I have uh, a few different Siku in the collection. Not a ton of them, but I do have a few, and I do enjoy the ones that I do have. So here's the Porsche Cabriolet. And then, of course, we have the non-Cabriolet version of it. What's the deal? There's a weird sticker on the back of this. Here's the Porsche 911 Turbo S just kind of slides out of the back the other kind of neat thing is they are repackageable you can open them up and you can put them right back in the package if you wanted to if you want to store them that way so anytime something is repackageable like this i generally do kind of save these just in case you never know if i want to like move it along to another person's collection or something like that down the road it's kind of cool to just have the the old packaging it doesn't take up much space either so you could also store them like that if you wanted to they're just easy to pull out and put back in. So, again, rubber tires. Uh, we got black rims on this one as well. We got the inserted details for the headlights. Nice metallic paint on this one. Painted details on the back. We got opening doors on this model too. A lot of the Siku stuff does have opening doors, or opening features. Man, those doors open insanely wide. That's definitely not realistic, but uh, according for like play value and stuff like that and functionality, you see how thick these are? It would probably be pretty hard to break them. And uh, that's because they do make their vehicles, you know, safe for uh, kids to play with, um, not just as a, you know, a replica collectible model. They make also a ton of different like odd stuff like construction equipment. If you're not familiar with the brand, they make a ton of stuff. They make... A lot of stuff and it's more geared towards um you know play value really than it is collectability and um at least from what i understand or from what i've seen you know i could be wrong i'm not super familiar with the brand but that's what i see it's kind of a neat interesting different uh different brand so i like them i think they're cool and i have a couple of uh a couple of them in my collection and i don't plan on you know, get rid of them anytime soon. I, I, I do enjoy them a bit. So yeah, there's that. All right. Uh, lastly, we got our one Hot Wheels of the day before we get into Auto World stuff. And that is this Hopper. Again, this Hopper is beautiful. Um, limited edition, one of 10,000 pieces. Hopper, the Lost Cars of China. Well, what is the deal with the Lost Cars of China? I don't know. Um, I don't know what else was in this, uh, what it was in the set. Let's see here. Okay, so in 1972, long before there were throngs of Hot Wheels collectors, Mattel began producing all of its 164 scale diecast cars in China. For reasons that are not completely clear, a few tools used to make certain model cars were misplaced, discarded, mislaid, well, lost. Uh, recently, these lost Hot Wheels tools from bygone era were discovered under debris in a seldom used area of one of our manufacturing facilities. It was shortly thereafter that we realized that these lost cars of China would be highly desirable and coveted by Hot Wheels collectors, so we have decided to manufacture these models once again. In production runs, limited to 10,000 vehicles. Don't lose out on your chance to collect these highly coveted cars. Well, that's kind of interesting because obviously they made the Hot Bird a bunch, right, afterward. And I don't know, this particular version of the tooling obviously must be different in some way um and i am not educated enough on it even though i collect the tooling i'm not educated on it enough to really uh give you some intelligent information here it, however what i can do is i do have here i've got a jammer here with a bunch of my hot birds if you guys want to sneak peek at that oh uh, we'll just we'll just pull that out because i was able to grab it that's the beauty of being organized by the way um so there's a bunch of hot birds down here let me lift the camera up these are in baggies so it's kind of hard to see them with glare and stuff like that but we don't want any of those any of those nine i want to flip it over to the other side because we want to get probably an older uh hot bird to look at so doo -doo 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 -doo. there's been a few different versions of the tooling of the hot bird by the way over the years 
Um, so I think we probably want something right there. We got a black wall and we got one with hot ones. I believe I got that black wall one from Todd too, way back in the day. This actually might've been a car that he played with in his childhood. Um, he gave it to me in the beginning of his collecting. I think that's the one we should pull out because I think this is from, yeah, this is a Hong Kong base and likely is from around 77. Um, so we'll look at that. And then this one says in 72, long before. So, which, I don't know. Does that make any sense to you? Why would they do a Hotbird, which a hop, the Hotbird is like the 77 Trans Am, right? How would they have tooled that in 72? Something's not, something's not connecting here. Um, and I don't fully understand it. So I'm hoping, you know, my resident Hot Wheels expert who comments on a lot of my videos, uh, Derek Dumas, um, he, uh, he's got, I don't know, he's like an encyclopedia for this stuff. So he's probably going to comment down here. And if he does, uh, on what the deal is with this, I will, I will pin his comment. So I believe this is an original from 19, probably maybe 78. I'm not really sure. They did release this car, I think, a few years in a row. So I don't really know. It's in very good shape. It's the black one. There are, there's like a brown one of this, a blue one of this. I don't have those. Uh, those can get very expensive if you find one um, in minty condition. Uh, but we do have this black one to look at. That is legit from like Hong Kong. But here is, I guess, the Lost Cars of China one. Yeah, so for reasons that are not completely clear, it's, I, well, and I am not clear on how, because I thought they just made these headlights for the Firebird in like, what was it, 77? 77, 78? And how would they have done that in 72? Well, we're opening this now, and let's take a peek at it. Man, the paint is, oh wow, this got some extra treatment too. I got a little Invisalign for the car. Um, oh man, it's beautiful. It almost looks like an ultra red in paint. So Pontiac Firebird, Mattel, 1977 copyright date. And then it says China with an overbar here, uh, meaning that they added that to the tooling of the base when it was actually originally probably tooled like that. It was Hong Kong. Well, actually, at this point, it might have been Malaysia. Um, but when did this come out? This came out uh, 2005, I believe, is when these Lost Cars of China came out. Interesting, intriguing, mysterious, pretty nifty. Okay, so do you see what we're curious about here? Is there any differences in these tools? And offhand, I don't really see anything different about them. And this one's got a you know a shinier base. It's got the the, the base is definitely tooled a little bit differently. Uh, I got the Hot Wheels logo here instead of just Hot Wheels right there. But if this tooling dates back to '72. I just don't understand. I don't know. I don't understand. This has got the modern style rivet too. This one's got like the domed rivet that you see on older black walls and stuff like that. So I don't understand. I don't know. I'm not sure. But what I do know is that this car is cool and I didn't have it before and I am super glad to have it now. This is a really cool car and really nice version of this Hotbird. And man, does that paint just gorgeous. You guys know I love you know, that ultra red style paint. And this is, this fits the bill. Um, I would definitely like to get the one with just black walls. I got to get that black wall variation. So very cool. So again, uh, you know, if we get a comment down in the comments, I will be sure to snag that, pin it up top. So you guys can look at that. So check back for that. Um, so I'm sure we'll get some additional information about, about this. Um, very, very neat. And uh, I'll go up, close that up. This will probably go on display for a little while before it ends up in this jammer. But slowly making progress on the hoppers. There is a lot out there that you can try to go after that are just going to be out of my range for the long for a long time. Um, you know, unless I get lucky and stumble upon them 
and am able to get them cheap, it's going to be hard for me to just throw money at the problem. So stoked on the ones that I do have that are harder to get. All right. Put that little beauty aside and let's go take a look at this. So again, this is Auto World. So 2017 was an interesting year for Auto World. Um, very low production numbers. This is when they started to creep back into the, uh, you know, higher than 2000 range. They, a lot of the releases for this year were very, very, very limited, very limited production. And 2,500 pieces is, is really a far cry from what they're at now, as far as production number. Because now we're in, you know, let's see, now we're in, you know, obviously we're in the 15,000, we might get up to 20,000 soon. And that's great. That means Auto World is being successful. That means they're selling and moving a lot of units. And that's what you really want. I mean, it's great to have these limited pieces and stuff like that. But uh, if you want the brand to survive, they got to sell cars, right? And uh, so it's fantastic that they're doing well. Now, that's a sign of the time. You know, like they're definitely selling, moving a lot more units now than they used to. So um, that's pretty cool. Uh, so this, again, is from uh, 2017 release four. There was bunch of cool cars in this release um the one the other ultra red that i am missing is this 1964 plymouth barracuda so i gotta get that one yet and then once i have that one this release will be complete and we'll do a full series review you know four years later after it came out um on it almost five years so yeah there that is so of course we got to look at the other ones so this is your version a here the green with green, green interior, green, looks pretty cool, pretty awesome. I love this Mach 1 casting. It's a fantastic casting. Here's your version B, black with uh, silver. Good looking car too. And then, of course, the ultra red. So I'm just going to pop her open. Yep, it's a valuable one. But, you know, once you make the commitment to have a loose collection you got to kind of stick with it. There's no putting the cars back in the package, that's for sure. Uh, so this comes from the days when we got Auto World in boxes, which is great because we can go ahead and take this little insert piece here. We can uh, put that in the box, close up the box, and put that with my box collection. If I ever need to move or ever need to do anything, you know where the cars are going to go. And here we go. Here it is. So it's got a little bit of a stance issue that you could even tell in the packaging. But I'm not too worried about that. I'm just glad to have this in the collection. I really thank Todd for giving this one up. And it's a kind of a unique looking one with the green interior. Kind of a Christmassy look almost. Of course, opening hood. Ultra red color. Uh, this one has a white base. You can see the production date code there, 8-25-2017. And uh, just a cool looking Mach 1. So I am really glad and stoked to, to finally have this. And of course, these go after the version A of the vehicle. That's why it's got the uh, green interior. Uh, that's why it has the black spoiler and black accents instead of the silver like this black model does. So very, very cool. All right, we got uh, three more to get to. Uh, let's do the Suburban. So there's the Suburban. The Suburban is on a version B card. Of course, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, this is one of the few releases, though, that they did use the version B traits for the Ultra Red. And that's why it's got these kind of like goldish wheels or saddle poly, I guess I should say, because that's the technical color of it. Here's the, uh, the regular version B loose that I've already opened. Pretty cool. And then, of course, we got the version A, which um, might as well rip that open quick. Uh, the other odd thing about this is the version uh, B stuff hit stores, around my area anyway, way before the version A. So that must have been a some trouble on the water trying to get over here. Or trouble once it got here. I don't know. Once it got to port. I have no idea. So it looks good in this red color as well. Uh, pretty decent model, popular model. People are liking this one. It's not the most exciting casting that Auto World has put out, you know, for for my tastes, but definitely a popular one and a pretty cool, unique one. Uh, 
uh, it's cool. It's it's neat. All right, um, and then we got uh, the course of the ultra red. Here we go, and let's open her up. So I thought this red looked kind of palish compared to normal ultra reds. Maybe they all look like that. I don't know from the series, but see how dark that is, and see how light that is. It almost looks like it's an oversprayed. Um, version of the gold one I don't know is it I don't know interestingly too so these have white interiors I think all the ultra reds in this release have white interiors yeah so white interior ultra red base ultra red body um, and I think that's it white tires of course that's obvious right nothing underneath the hood that indicates anything um, but yeah, you can see that there's kind of like some metal flake in there. It's almost like it's lightly sprayed over the gold. It's probably not true at all, but... I just thought it was kind of pale looking for a... Uh, not as deep of an ultra red color. I guess we'll compare it to the others in the series. That's going to be the one, the thing that makes a little bit more sense. And that's why you got the gold wheels, though. That's a cool-looking model. Thanks again, Andrew, uh, for hooking me up with that. Um, the next one, let's do let's do the Ford F-150. This one undoubtedly is going to confuse the heck out of people because, well, novice ultra-red collectors sometimes don't know what to look for, and this is not the ultra-red. This is the ruby red metallic. Uh, limited to 13,448 pieces, so this is the version A. Take a peek at it. I like that the interior is tan on these. This is uh, honestly, I think, the best. These two trucks are the best release of this Ford M150 casting that they've come out with so far. It's just got the most flavor. The casting is beefy. It's big. It's heavy. It's got a tailgate that folds down. It's got a hood that pops up. And this is very close to ultra red color here. And that's why it's going to confuse people. You know, round two likes to get tricky with their chases. If you've been a collector of, you know, any of the Johnny Lightning, White Lightnings, or the Ultra Reds, you know that. And they like to change up the traits. So here's this one. Of course, this is going to go after, I guess, the version B, although I don't know if there's much of a difference here. White interior, white wheels, Ultra Red base, Ultra Red body. And I guess the red coloring on this one's pretty much the same. Kind of palish ruby red color. So you can see some difference there somewhat hard to tell but there that is maybe they painted over like a silver or something because you almost can see like white in there I don't know I got a little dirt on the wheel here. That's the only thing that kind of stinks about these white tires, besides the fact that they're white tires. I know that a lot of people aren't fans of the white tires. I've kind of have an atonement for it, I guess. But, uh, but they do get dirty easily if you have them loose. And actually, this came out of the package like this. This was not from not my fault. The tire's not quite on straight either, but. It's all right. It's a chase. It is what it is. This thing is uh, pretty cool. You got a little mark on the side here. But yeah, nice to complete that. So version A, version B, ultra red. Uh, we'll set that aside. And then the last ultra red is going to be for this bad boy. This thing looks amazing in green, by the way. That version B car. Uh, looks absolutely fantastic so the version a though is a decent color too it's an interesting indigo blue we'll go ahead and pop this open this is uh 13,904 pieces came right off the card this is a sick tooling from auto world definitely another popular one you've done a lot of cool versions of this so far i think the best one so far has been the one that they put out in destroyer gray a while back and uh, that one definitely takes the cake for me. But actually, I think that was just the last release, right? Yeah. 
That was uh, release two for 2021, 20, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's kind of a weird color, though. It's kind of bluish, almost not, not purple, but I don't know. Indigo. Nice looking car, though. So that's your version A. Um, so, and this is your version B. So we know by going off of version B, we should get these black stripes that aren't present on this car on the ultra red. And I haven't even looked at it yet, but yes, it does. Okay, so there you go. Here's your proof. Doesn't matter if it's on a version A card, you're gonna get the same car on a version A or version B. That's the way they do their chases. I know it's confusing. It's always confusing, but the card does not matter with these things, which I love because <laughs> otherwise imagine having to collect 12 chase cars in a series. That would be ridiculous. There are some people that go for that, actually. The card variation is counting. I am glad I'm not one of those people. So, a little bit of dirt on the tires. Not much, though. And this, I mean, this isn't the cleanest space I've got here, but definitely not the cause of it. This thing looks pretty killer. Uh, so, black stripes on there. Of course, white interior, white tires, red base. And a nice mean looking car quite cool indeed so i am digging that as well all right so lastly last thing that we need to look at i guess is this jeep that he gave me it's a yellow jeep and i am closely inspecting it now to see what is the deal what is what is he talking about here and i don't even remember what he said was wrong with it and you know what Oh, I can see it now. All right, so you're not going to be able to see it on camera, though. It's pretty minor. Oh, well, maybe you can see it. There's a weird, like, film right here that almost looks like super glue. It's got a texture to it, and it's just right here on this door. Um, the rest of it doesn't seem to have any issues, but right there on that door, there's something weird going on, and we cannot... He said he tried to, like, wipe it off and stuff, and you just can't, and I can see that you can't. How am I going to show that to you, though? There you go. You can kind of see it there. So that's why he got a replacement model for this and then uh, gave this one to me. All right, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys very much for watching another one, another Auto World Heavy episode. So I'm sorry if you guys aren't too into that, but uh, you know I am. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be it. So thank you guys again for watching. Have yourself a great day. Check out the playlist, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And, uh, you know, see you next week.